What's going on, Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com. I'm here with my man, JT Williamson, S4 Sports Academy, one of my best friends ever, college roommate. I'm gonna tell you in this video how he got me a scholarship to Auburn University <laughs> <laughs> and also one for himself as a five foot six, six five foot six player, fifty five pounds, probably. stud. Not anymore. Though. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in this video. But before we get there, check out what he's got going on. Schooling looks a lot different right now. More kids than ever are doing school without actually going to school. So the question is, what are your kids doing for PE? I'm Coach JT, and I've been coaching and training kids in PE since 2012. S4 at Home is made up of video lessons that your children can watch to learn proper exercises and sports techniques. It consists of 24 lessons where I will teach your kids right in your own yard. So check us out today. Click the link below to get more information or sign up right now. Let's get active. Really cool stuff JT's got going on. I'll leave the link down below if you guys are interested in checking it out. But let's get into the story. Talk about it. We played junior college together That's right. and then went to Auburn, but it was, a, it was a struggle That's right. getting there, right? Tell the story, man. It's a great story. Not a struggle for you. <laughs> um, well, you made it happen. It's true. It's true. So, um, as John mentioned, I was a 5'6", 155-pound outfielder, which is, uh, generally speaking, not, does not qualify for a five-star super recruit. So in junior college, how it, how it typically works is you will, you know, your, your, your coaches will ask you, where do you want me to push you? Because obviously in the junior, junior college system, that is, uh, you know, really a, a, a primary selling point for their program. The coaches is to my guys are going off to bigger schools. So that's how they get bigger recruits and all that kind of thing. So our coach, Coach Nick, would ask, what are your top three schools maybe? And I grew up an Auburn fan, um, have a, a handful of Auburn graduates in my family, been saying War Eagle since I came out of the womb, essentially. And that's where I always wanted to go. So that was my top school. And our coach at the time, Coach Michael Nicholson, um, he reached out to Auburn for me. And uh, just, a, you know, sort of, I, I imagine sort of a preliminary call. And it turned out that he actually had a contact there that, again, this is many years ago, but I don't believe that he knew that. I, I think he figured that out based on, uh, you know, inquiring about me. And as would be expected, they were not interested in a five foot six, 155 pound <laughs> outfielder. Thanks for calling. That's right. Um, but it up. did, uh, it, it created that connection. Again, it, it was, uh, there was an assistant coach at Auburn that Coach Nicholson knew that, uh, you know, they, they sort of reconnected. And just so happened that uh, Coach Nick had a really good team coming back, headlined by John and uh, a couple other guys that, uh, really several guys, I mean several guys from that team went on and played at, uh, at big time schools and, and even a couple got drafted, I believe. And so anyhow, that connection is what started the pipeline that got John and two other of our seminal teammates uh, scholarships to Auburn. I was not one of them, <laughs> however. Um, so for me, uh, as the rest of the guys are, and, and, and it should be mentioned just so that the story makes sense, I'm a year older. Yes. I, I'm, a, I'm a year ahead of John and the other two guys. So I had some smaller school offers and uh, was already set to go to, to a local school, and, and it was really a, a great baseball program. Um, and everything was set in stone, but this school had some some sort of odd uh, enrollment requirements, and my transcript, transcripts were flagged, and I was going to have to sit out that first semester, which basically uh, took out the ability to play that coming spring, so I was going to have to redshirt. Meanwhile, I, I say all this to say that meanwhile, because of the connection that was made before that, all of these guys are getting Auburn offers and are committing to Auburn. I was not happy about that. <laughs> and I said, I was happy for them, but I was not happy that, that I was not involved in that. And quite frankly, I said, well, that's crap because I'm as good as those guys. And, and hopefully at the time they agreed. So I just said, you know what? Um, 
This is what I've always wanted to do. It is my dream school. I'm just going to do what it takes and, and I'm going to go. And uh, sure enough, got accepted. Luckily, there was, again, that connection between Coach Nicholson and the, the Auburn staff. They were able to give me a preferred walk-on position. Um, and so uh, as, I, you know, as I got there, I already had a spot, but by no means was, um, was, was anything expected out of me as a player. Um, but that's how I got there. Possibly more of a courtesy, like, all right, let's get these guys. Say, I would say so. Prob probably a thank you to Coach Nick for giving him three studs that had come in, you know, that <laughs> class. So, and know. I think we should mention too that you killed it as a sophomore. I did at junior yes, college. I did. Like, I did. I was I was an all conference player. Definitely um, qualified to play at the Division One level. I think sure. size was a main. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. I mean, you know, and and for us that team, the, and 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 certainly the team after uh, I left that, that John played on, you know, we were really, um, that, that was a team that because there were so many good players, we were getting a lot of high profile exposure just by having all these other good players around. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that really, you know, it, it opened a lot of doors for all of us, I would say, you know, not just us guys that went to Auburn. So it was, um, you know, it, it was, I, I will say this, it, it was hard work, there's no doubt about that, I put my mind to it, but I also, I focused a lot on putting myself in the right places too. You know, there, there's some luck involved, but you can, you can manipulate that luck if, uh, you know, if you know where to be, you know who to be seen by, those kind of things. So, so the first year at Auburn, my first year at Auburn, you both ended up, We were both. Right, it was both our I first sat year. that year out completely. Right. right. And then we both came in at the same time, yep. We lived in different apartments that first year, ended up living together the second year. Take us through the journey, your first year, and like figuring out you actually earned a scholarship did. By, did. The, by your second year there. Yes, so in fall camp, I, I always tell this story. Fall camp, the first day, uh, and again, I'm, I'm a little known guy. I, I know, luckily I had these three guys that I of course knew that I had played with, uh, but to the rest of the team, I was, I was nobody. And, um, I always tell the story where I walk into the meeting room the first day and probably the first three or four guys I saw, they must've been pitchers or something. <laughs> everybody was like six, five, six. I mean, look at him. Every, everybody was humongous. And so I thought like, did I just walk into the basketball meeting or something? Like, <laughs> am I in the wrong place? Um, and, you know, it worked out, which, which the, the other funny part of that story, which is, of course, as I got to know the guys and, and you know, you, you swap stories, they tell the story from the other side where they're all, you know, chumming around. And then all of a sudden this little leaguer walks in, <laughs> like he's going to sit down and be one of the players. And they, they thought maybe I, I was in the wrong place. Um, turns out we had it all right. But, uh, you know, but that was my first experience. Um, you know, again, it was one of those scenarios where nothing was certainly given to me. And while it, 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 it wasn't, the path wasn't laid, I did my best to make my own path, you know, and going into that fall camp, again, reps are limited when you're in that position. Um, certainly mine were. Coming in as a junior, that's even less value because I have to make, you know, truly an instant impact. But when I got an opportunity, I focused and I made it work. You know, I still remember the first inner squad at bat that I had, I struck out. But it was a third strike swinging on a dirt ball. The ball got away, all right? So I got to first base. I stole second, and then I went to third on a pass ball. And I think that really, you know, and that was just, that was probably a bunch of guys that, you know, already knew their spot, knew what, the, knew what was expected of them, and... Was no urgency. No urgency. Probably, you know, not that I was a threat to anybody, but di just didn't think of, didn't think of those situations as opportunities because for them, they weren't opportunities like they were for me. You were playing like it was game seven I, of it, World Series. This here. is it. Right. This is right. it. This is my chance. Right. And, you know, the, thankfully the ball bounced my way. Um, and, it, and it really, it, it sort of snowballed from there. You know, I think, um, I think I, I started my, the, the way that I got recognized, certainly by the coaching staff and ultimately by my teammates, was as a 
a you know blue collar hard nosed ball player. Um, certainly not the most talented. That's not even up for debate. Um, but you know I, I was a guy, and I think everybody knew that I wanted it, and I made it happen. You know, and like I said, that that situation catapulted to where by opening day I was the starting right fielder. Grinder, and, uh, grinder, hustler, just right. just made it happen, and had a great junior year. Well. My junior, well, it was your technically both, your junior both, year yeah. too, because you missed year that, playing, yes. right? And then so you had a good great year, and then we became roommates. Actually, it was still while we were living at still the other apartment. It was the, it was the uh, summer. You came over, and well, we had a coaching change. Yes, so that we was should mention big, that. That yes. was the big yes. thing. Yeah, we had a we uh, we had a great start to the season, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden conference play hit. And we took a nose down. Yeah, we were ranked number six in the we nation, were, right? We got all the way up to number six in the nation. I remember we went and beat Clemson Yeah. And uh, in a three-game series. I actually had a really good series, I think. But, and, and you know, a coaching change um, is one of those things that, that everything is sort of in flux. Everything is thrown up in the air. And as an adult now, you recognize certainly more the business aspect of, you know, college baseball and just sort of how it works, at, certainly more than we did now. So naive me <laughs> i am i ended that season i think i was third on the team in hitting um and and just had a you know a, certainly for me a great year a, a productive year i would say um and somebody's gonna look it up now and now i was fourth or something you know whatever <laughs> i was up i was somewhere okay i played a little bit and certainly to the point that um you know i felt like i had earned my spot on the team and so we're sitting in the apartment one morning and the new coach is already, he's already in, he's got his office, he's, you know, sort of setting everything up for the next season. I think this is over the summer. And all of these guys, John and, and our other few friends that lived in the apartment complex, decided that that was the day that they were going to pump me up and, uh, and talk me into marching into that office and demanding a scholarship because Dad gummit, I had earned it. And uh, so I'm, I'm like, let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. And I'm huffing and puffing. And um, so I walk in there and I uh, say, Coach, um, here are New my coach. stats. New coach. I, I, maybe the second time I met him. <laughs> and I say, Coach, uh, I really think that uh, I've, I've, I've earned a scholarship. I've, I've earned my place on this team, blah, blah, blah. I think I might even had something written down. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> And he said, uh, that's not going to happen. And you really may need to worry about your spot on this team. So the meeting didn't go as expected. Uh, I did have a spot on the team. I, you know, it was, the whole year was, that whole year was a little bit weird. Um, he actually, I, I ended up having an okay fall. He actually did come back a few weeks later. And I did end up with a small scholarship. So... You know, I, I, I was a scholarship athlete at Auburn, which is, you know, something that I'm very proud of. Um, and, you know, again, I know one of the things that you guys, you, you focus on the little things. And, and I know that, uh, that your business is built on creating uh, better baseball players. But, you know, a lot of times for me, I think it comes down to being a competitor. All of those things are very important. But being a competitor and just wanting to win in any situation, for me, that's what really, it motivated me, it catapulted me, and in the end, it worked out. I mean, this is my job now. You know, I talk sports and, and do sports, so. I love, I love that story every time I hear it, man. It's just a great story about setting a goal. He wanted to play at Auburn. He set it, he put it out there, he wanted to do it, and he just grind it grinded hustled made it happen there was perseverance there was you know just making it happen just making it happen it all started with putting it out there setting right. setting a goal or, or even if it wasn't an intentional goal you put it out there That's you know right. and the odds were stacked against you i Certainly. mean you know five foot six hundred fifty something pounds That's right. you're not going to get a lot of <laughs> division one offers i i think in my defense i was five seven in the program oh yes i'd like yeah. that noted by the way that's probably something I, I was six five. I'm six four now. But yeah, I was yeah, six yeah. five. I think you, I think you had an inch. I don't want to know what I am now. 
Let's go with five, six. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you've got any questions, hop down in the comments below. Definitely go check out the S4 at home training program. If you've got a young athlete who's stuck at home, uh, you know, during this crazy time, homeschooled, whatever it is, ki uh, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, uh, in that age range, check it out. Links below. Um, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.